Welcome back to Wanting Your Racing. Today we'll be working on another project car. Now this car has been hiding back there next to the C10 for a while underneath the cover. But I finally got all the parts for it. And it is this Audi A5. The car is in service mode, so the front end is off. It threw a P0016 correlation code, crankshaft, camshaft correlation. So the timing jumped. Or at least the timing chain stretched a little bit. So today's project, I'm going to be replacing the timing chain on this car. And hopefully she'll be running perfect at the end of the day. When I first got this car, it came on a trailer. So I went ahead and took all this off. And I did verify that something moved in here. Jumped one tooth or the chain stretched so much. But I did do a leak down test on all the cylinders to make sure that the valves are good. And it passed the leak down test. So hopefully there's no other issues inside of here. And it just needs the timing chain replaced. When I first got this car, I jumped the gun a little bit. I wanted to get down to the timing, see what's going on with that. And I can't remember if I drained the oil or not. So before I tear into this front end, I'm going to jack this up and drain the oil. So nothing is leaking on the floor, making a mess on my floor. Look at all that oil. My drain pan was clogged, so I did make a mess on my floor. This car uh, was not taken care of, to put it nicely, as you can tell by that oil. All right, now that the oil has already drained all over my floor, now we can start tackling the front end here. I'm going to take uh, the belt off. I need to take the tensioner off as well. Take this upper timing cover off, and then we can take this lower timing cover off once we take off the crank pulley. 17 millimeter for this. Just take that off. Throw it off to the side. Actually, I don't have to take the tension off, so that's good. Let's go ahead and take this uh, the crank pulley off, which requires a special tool, which I'll pull out here in a minute. First, let's uh, take the camshaft sensor off. Move the dipstick out of the way. Well guys, my camera overheated. But unlike my camera, I kept on working. I got the lower cover off, cleaned up all the surfaces on that. Next up on this project is taking the cam bridge off, taking this chain off, which is the oil pump, and then I can tackle the rest of the timing chain. This here is reverse thread. Now in order to get this off, there's a variety of special tools here. I have about five of these. They all have a different pattern on them. So I have to find which one fits this, which might be this one. It is this one here. So I'm going to take this off and then I can take the whole cam bridge off. Like I said earlier, they are reverse thread. So you got to take it off as if you were tightening it on.
as you can tell there was zero tension on the chain so it was slipping a little bit this chain is it's definitely worn out that tensioner is pretty much gone so let's keep on tearing into this and see what I can find out if there's any more damage yeah so let's go get this off gonna put this off to the side. Now I have to take this bolt out and the remaining bolts on the cam bridge and I can completely take this off. Alright, this bolt here is a M10 triple square and the rest of these are the T30 Torx which is the same Torx as the front cover. Take that off. Should just slide out just like this. Of course, that is making a mess everywhere. Wow, look at that. That is surprising to me. Right here is a little screen. On these engines, they blow apart, deteriorate, and then that screen goes off into the head somewhere, and it's really hard to find but knowing that this one's still intact is a good sign. So once again, the camera overheated, so I kept on working on this. I got the tensioner off. That thing was completely blown out. It was done. So it definitely had to be replaced a long time ago, but it is what it is. So now I'm going to take the chain off and then I'm going to take off the counter shaft chain which is behind here and uh, let's get back to work. Now since this did slip time when I was taking off the, the solenoid that was right there, I'm going to have to retime that but I can do that with all this off. So. Go take the chain and guides off. Now, it's like now, the slide chain off. This guy is also getting replaced. Yeah, I'm going to start getting into the counter shaft chain here in a minute. 
Now in order to time these properly, obviously there is markings on the chain, but there's no markings up here to time these right. So you have this mark on the camshafts right here, and you have to measure from right here to that. That measurement's gonna be around 61 millimeters to like 64 millimeters. I'll do that once uh, I have all this taken care of. But yeah, let's, let's get this off so I can replace that chain and those guides. So the counter shaft chain tensioner is right here on the side. It is a 27 millimeter to get off. Pops out just like that. And now I can take off all the guides. This chain should just come off like this. All right, with the counter shaft chain off, you can see a marking right there and a little dot on this gear. Inside of here, there is two dots on the inner gear and then on the intake side counter shaft, there's a dot right there. So you make sure those line up. And on the bottom of the crank gear, there's a little arrow right there. So the new chain should line up with all those. Let's go ahead and put it on. Now with the new chain on, this lines up right here. This one lines up with a little dot on there. And this one lines up with the arrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the guides on. There's one right there. Another around this side. And then we can put the tensioner side on. All right, now with the new chain installed and the guides, I'm gonna to torque these to 20 newton meters, which is about 15 foot pounds. And then I'm gonna to torque the new tensioner down to 85 newton meters, which is roughly do some quick uh, Google math. This is 63 foot-pounds. So I'm going to torque those down and then we can move on to the, the timing chain. So like I said on these, they're roughly 15.
That, uh, that other torque wrench seems to not be working. These are definitely uh, at 15. I'm going to grab my other torque wrench so I can torque down the tensioner. All right, now that I have a micrometer, go zero that out. So you measure from the center of this here to the line on the intake camshaft. Like I said earlier, it should be 61 to 64 millimeters, which we're at 75. So we're definitely a few teeth off. What you do to get that back in alignment is there's a slot on the camshaft where you can fit a 18 millimeter wrench and then you can move it whichever way you need to go. To lock both camshafts with your special tools, there are these, which this one screws in on this side. And this one goes right here on the camshaft side, the exhaust camshaft side. So this, that way uh, once you get camshafts in time, you can just slide these in and they lock in the teeth. So let's get this one to where it needs to be, which 61 to 64 millimeters, which is way over here. So, I'll turn that this way, and that's exactly 61 millimeters. Now the intake time Now the intake side camshaft is in alignment. It's locked into place. And now we take a measurement from the line on the intake camshaft to the exhaust camshaft. That measurement is 124 millimeters to 126. So get this all the way out to 124 and right here is exactly 124 so we're two teeth off on the exhaust camshaft side so I'm going to move that over I'm going to get some needle nose and just turn it using these holes right here This one's definitely a lot harder than the other side. Let's see where that lines us up at. I'm bringing over one more tooth and see where that is. Now 
now I gotta go back. Just put that in its place. Obviously I went too far on that one. So we're roughly right where we need to be. Let's see, one, 125 millimeters. So we're right where we need to be on this. So now I can put the timing chain on and guides and all that, and then we should be good to go. All right, now on the timing chain, there are two darkened links right here. These line up with the camshaft markings, and then there's one all the way on the bottom here that is also darkened. And that lines up with the arrow on the crank gear. So let's go ahead and put this on. Just slide it in like that. Turn this around. Let's see here. Move the camshaft ever so slightly. There we go. Basically it lines up like that. I need to get the guide in here. So this is uh, the top side it has tension on it. I'm going to hold this and then slide this on down here. That should be lining up with the arrow on I'm going to bring you down here so you can see what I'm looking at so down here there is an arrow on this gear that points to the darkened link on the chain so you just make sure all these are lined up and you should be good to go I'll show you how to check that once everything is back together. Alright, as you saw earlier, I was losing tension on this cam gear, causing it to slip a tooth. Trick here is to just zip tie this together so nothing jumps. Everything is still in time, so now I can slide the guides on, and we should be good. This little one right here goes in on the top, which I need to loosen, I need to give more slack on the chain. Should slide in pretty easy once there's no chain in the way. Just like that. And then you can put the guide on this side in. anyways there we go 
go. That bolts up right there. And then the tensioner guard, which goes like this. Slide this up in there. Take this off to give it room. Uh, I'm going to cut the zip tie and then we can do the rest. Alright, holding tension on this side, just turn the crank, take up any slack that's on this side. Now I can mount the tensioner guide in its place. When doing timing belts or timing chains, anything like that, slack on the tensioner side doesn't matter. You want all the other sides, like on the on this for instance, top and the intake side to be tight. So that way it doesn't jump timing on that side. Just like the counter shaft guides, tighten these to 20 newton meters, and then you tighten this to eight, which is basically just hand tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all that up. You don't have to go to town on these. It's only eight noon meters, which is like five foot pounds. Absolutely nothing. All right, marks line up on the chain. The arrows lined up on the bottom here. Go ahead and pull the pin and see what happens. Now I'll get this out of the way. I'm going to completely get this out of the way here. Now, to make sure that you're still in time after doing all this, you turn the crankshaft over twice, which is one revolution up here. So you turn this over twice and these marks should be right where they are right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, mark right here with a Sharpie so it's easier to uh, tell if you're still in time or not. I'm gonna, now that the pin is pulled on the tensioner, everything is tight. Now in order to make sure that you're still in time is you turn the crank over twice which it's one revolution up here so these marks should be exactly where they are after turning over the crank twice i'm going to mark up here with a sharpie just so i can easily tell if it's off or not so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then i'm going to turn everything over just mark right there which is roughly where that one is. And then right here, that's where that one is pointing. So I'm gonna turn this over and see if we're good.
all that lines up as it should. We're so good down here. Yeah. I think we're good. I went ahead and double and triple checked that it was still good, which it is. Now it's time to put on the oil pump chain. There is no timing to this. Should just slide on just like that. The tensioner bolts on right here. Once I release the tension on this, it'll take up all the slack in this chain. Go ahead and torque that down. The measurement for this is 9 newton meters, which again is nothing. Basically, just make sure it's tight on there. Which that should do it. Pull the grenade pin, and that's good to go. Now that all the chains are on, everything's looking in time. I need to put the cam bridge back on, and then I need to clean up the lower cover so I can apply sealant on it, and then I can put that on top cover, and then we'll go from there. Right here's the cam bridge. Usually the screen deteriorates on this, but mine looks good, so I'm going to reuse this. This goes on just like should just slide on there. that is on put the bolts back in the bolt right there and then the, the actuator for that again these, these bolts don't need to be crazy tight on here These bolts are tied down to 9 newton meters, which just like the tensioner bolts is nothing. Just make sure they're on there. Now remember this piece is reverse thread, 
so gotta go the opposite direction of which you normally would. In this case it's righty loosey lefty tidy. Yeah. So put this on my ratchet. And I can tighten that down. All right, now that the cam bridge is reinstalled, I want to get the lower cover on. All right, now that the cover is nice and clean, I can apply silicone around here. And I'm going to replace the gasket on the upper cover as well. So I'm going to go ahead and apply silicone to this and then put on the engine. On this, you follow the little lines that are on it and you go inside of the dowel pin holes and the bolt holes. And then right here where the corner is, you just put a straight line across there. Now that silicone is applied to this cover, it's time to put it back on the engine. Out of the cover here, and I have 15 new bolts. Basically just slide it on carefully, don't knock into anything. And on each side, there are two old two dowel pins to line up there's one there's two just push it on and reinstall your bolts now that all these are run down the torque spec for every bolt is eight newton meters and then you do a eighth turn or 45 degrees. Just make sure they're all down where they should be. Alright, now that all those are torqued down, let's get back to that front cover, replace that gasket, and then put that on. For the front cover, it's just this rubber gasket. The bolts should stay in place. They are captive to the cover. more captive to the gasket, I should say. So that one did fall out, no big deal. Just knock all these out. I'm gonna give this a little cleaning and then put the gasket on. All right, I just gave the cover a nice cleaning. Let's go ahead and put that new gasket in.
There you go. That looks like the place it wants to be. Alright guys, so the battery on the GoPro died, so I kept on working. I got the whole front end on, front clip, front radiator support, whatever you want to call it. Got that back on, so I can start it. This thing is an automatic, so the tranny lines underneath here, I had to put those on, so fluid didn't start going everywhere when I go to start it. So I got this on, I just have a few more things to button up, and yeah, then I'll start it transmission lines are on everything is connected let's see if she starts up turn on the jump pack because the battery is dead Guys, so I put coolant in it. Turn it back on. Oh. Hold on. I thought you said turn it off. So she sounds just like she should. I put corn in it, I'm gonna let that bleed. And yeah, hopefully take it around the block. All right guys, it's a new day on the Audi where we left off. Um, we got it running, but it would not run under its own power using the alternator. On these cars, the battery charging is coded through the computer. If that code is wrong, then the alternator doesn't know how to charge properly. And basically, once my jump pack turned off, it just died because the alternator wasn't charging, thus just killing the car. So today I'm going to replace the battery and hopefully it'll run under its own power now. I have the front of the car on a battery charger to hold some of the memory. Let's go ahead, change this battery out, and hopefully go for the first test drive in nearly a year. Since the battery is inside the car, it has a vent tube to vent all the, the fumes from the battery. Alright, now with the new battery installed, I'm going to take the front end off the battery charger. And let's see if she'll run under her own power. So the battery change was a success. It did save the memory from the other night. Me and my friend, we did code the battery. So that's a good sign. 
I'm going to uh, put the trunk back together and then we'll go for a first test drive. All right guys, the trunk is now back together. And I'm gonna take this around the block right quick. As you can tell, I'm still missing a few parts. Um, the bumper is not installed yet because I need to fix the driver's side headlight. This is what it currently looks like. Had some damage right here. Um, it still didn't work though. So we tore it apart and the bulb itself looks okay. But this is the ballast. It's absolutely disgusting in here. Some corrosion everywhere bugs whatnot so i i ordered a replacement ballast headlight all that and then i'm going to put that back in the car and see if it works i haven't decided yet if i want to buy a whole new housing or just buy replacing lenses so i can make both sides look even anyways it's time to take this around the block and uh see how she drives Well guys, I'm gonna say that this little project was a success. The Audi drives just as it should. I still have a lot more to get done on it. The front end stuff, it's gonna be its own video. I need to service the transmission, the rear diff, all of that. So there's a lot more that needs to be done on this car. But this project, it was a big deal and it's done so stay tuned for more remember to like comment subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on this and all of our other projects thank you guys